So the first thing I wanted to do was talk about what exactly is uh, a website supposed to do and what exactly uh, are you supposed to uh, have as some kind of thoughts as you're putting it together, some thoughts as you're developing your website and web presence in general. So I kind of broke it down into kind of four main things to think about. So we'll talk about those first, and then we'll look at some at two example websites uh, from that volunteered their website to have this little conversation about. So uh, thank you to those two people. We'll get into who they are in just a little bit. And uh, but hopefully, if you're watching on IG, you might want to switch on to Facebook because uh, we're going to share the screen and be able to look at those websites. I'm going to try to aim the return the phone and aim it at the screen, but it might not work super well. So just FYI. And Instagram live crashed. So we'll start that back up. Hang on a second. Very exciting. Instagram live crashing on us. But uh, okay, so jumping in here, uh, what are the four things that your website needs to do or what to think about for your website? So um, you want to think about driving visitors to take the action that you want when they get there, not just showing up and doing whatever they want. Uh, you want to think about bringing them value. You want to express your brand and you want to focus on creating the least amount of clicks possible uh, to get them to where you want them to go when they come to your website. Now, musicians generally sometimes use a website just kind of as a like a business card, like an online business card. And um, that can be okay, but uh, Duke is excited. Uh, that can be okay, but it can be not super specific and not helpful in developing your business uh, and in terms of what you want people to do when you come to your website. So you got to then also think about what is the audience for your website. So we're moving back. So then what is your audience and who do you think is going to come? So you could say as musicians, the type of people that are coming to your website are number one, going to be people that want to know about you, want to know about your music. Could be people that want to listen to your music. It could be people that want to watch your videos. It could be uh, industry people that want to know who you are, or hire you. Uh, there could be festival promoters or club promoters, gigs, you know, for gigs and such. Uh, so any of those things are, are possible as types of audience. And we want to make it as friendly as possible for all those types. But also, really, you want to be thinking about connecting with your fans and building your audience and being able to monetize your audience, build your career, all those sorts of things. Now, um, we could, there's, there's a conversation to be had about, you know, is a website even relevant today? And I think so, because that's your home. If Facebook decides to go away, if Instagram gets deleted, any of these types of things, um, you never know when those sites could go down, the services could go down, and you, you just never know. So it's important to remember that uh, you want to be in control. So I think about my website, any website, as kind of the hub on which all of the other components sit. So if we're talking about uh, Instagram, Facebook, all kind of derived to the website, your store, all that stuff has to be on a website. So you got to have that website together. So we said there was going to be four things we're going to talk about. So first is drive visitors to take the action that you want. So oftentimes when I talk to clients, when I talk to uh, artists, is that they don't even think about what is the thing that you want, they want people to do when they come to their website. Um, what do you want them to see? What do you want them to listen to? What do you want them to consider? What do you, you know, all of those things um, are instantly either recognized or not recognized. You have to make an impression in less than 10 seconds, five seconds uh, to get them to take an action. So I always like to say, what is, if there's only one action that the per person could take from your website, uh, what would it be? And oftentimes people don't even consider that question. And then people go to the website, they have no direction. Uh, the, that, I mean, the visitor has no direction and then the visitor leaves. They don't check out what you wanted them to check out. Uh, they can't find what they're looking for. You want it to be super, super duper clear. So uh, you want to think about that. Drive visitors to take the action you want when they arrive because they got to know what to do next once they get there. Uh, second, bring your visitors value. Don't just make your website only about you. If you want to build an audience, you have to be actually giving the audience something, some information or some music or a video, different types of things. It could be a lot of different things, but you want to bring them some reason to come to your website and some reason to come back to your website. Uh, or to your, it's the same for social media. Like what are you presenting to your audience that allows them to want to come back again and again? So uh, think, about, think about that. 
uh, bringing your visitors value as they come to your website. There's got to be some sort of reason. It's not just going to happen out of thin air that they come to your website and want to come back. All right. <clears throat> At least in my opinion. Uh, the third thing is expressing your brand. So when they come, you're visually expressing your brand and you want to make sure that you're, number one, thinking about what that might be. What does it look like? What does it feel like? What colors is it? Uh, what fonts is it? What do those fonts and colors say about you and your brand? Uh, what do those colors and pictures say about what your music sounds like? Uh, how can they complement one to one another? Uh, thinking about all of the intersectionality of all of that stuff, the visual and the audio, how you how your professional promo photos look, how they're positioned on the website, where your sight lines are, all these different th types of things, but expressing your brand in a clear way so that we know what you're about, what we can expect, and, uh, and again, what to do next once we arrive on your website. And then the fourth thing that I'm gonna add into this is uh, what can you do uh, to create the least amount of clicks possible. With every click on a website, the uh, more people you're going to lose. So with every click, you want to make sure that it's actually relevant that there is a click there. You do, if you can avoid people having to click to a million different pages to get to something, it's always going to help you convert better. So, uh, and by convert better, I mean take the action that you want them to take when they arrive at your website, whether that's to listen to something, to watch something, or um, to go to a certain page or anything like that. So we're going to take a look at, with through this lens of those kind of four things, those four uh, ideas, uh, two websites that people submitted their own website here uh, for this little consultation, and we're going to take a look at them now. So I'm going to try to switch this over so you can be looking at uh, the computer screen. Yeah, that's not going to work. You're not going to be able to see it. So I'll just keep it here on me. And if you want to go over to Facebook so you can look at this, or if you see this now and want to check it out on YouTube later, uh, but I'll just be talking about these websites. But if you want to see it, go on to um, Facebook because I'm streaming my screen there too, uh, and we will uh, get that rolling. So we're going to start recording. Click to record the screen. And now we're going to share screen, share the desktop. All right, and I got these pulled up in a... Here we go. So we're going to look at two. So we're going to look at uh, Naomi Nakanishi, a pianist. She's uh, at Eastman. And we're going to watch and look at a trombonist named Cameron, his website. So let me just uh, make this a little bit bigger and keep this here so that we can sync it up later. So uh, we're looking at Naomi's website. This is her homepage. Uh, you type it in N. Uh, N N A K N I S music.com. Uh, I'm imagining that there's probably some sort of issue in trying to get that uh, more direct address. But the first thing I would say is uh, up here, if you take a look at the top of the screen, you want to change that from saying home and then music. You want to include your name there because you want uh, the websites to be able to know what this page is about. So you want to put at least put your name up here in the uh, metadata. I would highly recommend getting a URL that has your name in it. Uh, this is kind of hard to spell, unfortunately. And uh, I was even trying to look for the site, and it took me a couple minutes to actually be able to find it. So uh, I would definitely recommend that. Hey, Jazz Boy, how are you going? should know your name by now. Thanks for being here. We're talking about websites today. And um, so going back to Naomi here, uh, there's a large high quality picture and uh, you can look and you can see her eyes are looking to the right. And so that's drawing your attention right to her name. And there's a link there. So when I click the link, I think it just goes nowhere. Okay. So that's, you want to maybe unlink that because that makes me think I should click there. Right. Remember I said, you come to the website and then you're looking at it. What should I be doing? Uh, this, the way her eyes look, say, oh, I should be clicking on her name or I should be doing something there. Uh, but that doesn't do anything. And when I look at this, the first thing I think is there's no information here on the homepage. Um, I don't know what to do. If I am a new person, I don't, I can dig around in the website to find what I need, or you could present what somebody's looking for right here on the on the home page. I like, you know, she's got a nice layout here. The colors are matching kind of the picture to the uh, color scheme. 
I think this is a Wix site. Oh, I see, yeah, there's a credit down here on the bottom right. Yep, it's a Wix site. Uh, you might wanna update that. It says 2016 there. So the one com comment a lot of times you get from people uh, is that your web artist websites aren't updated often enough. So you wanna make sure that you're updating your website, keeping it updated because press media, they wanna see an updated website. So I highly recommend keeping your website up to date. Uh, and if it says 2016, even if you updated it yesterday, it makes me think, oh, you haven't looked at this in four years, it's 2020. All right, so I wanna make sure when you get there, Naomi, when you get someone gets to your page, you want them to be able to do something, take one action, what is it gonna be? Put it there on your homepage. If it's to subscribe to your email list so that you can stay in touch with them, you're gonna give them a free track, you're gonna give them access to an exclusive video, whatever it might be, but you wanna get one thing there that they're gonna be able to do that they can't do anywhere else. Um, so that's what you wanna do when you get there. So that's the first thing. What do you want them to do? And then we go through here and, okay, so we check out some other pages. She's got her bio, that's great. You can download it, that's also good. Some people like to have multiple versions of bios. Um, there's nothing in the, on here that makes me know that I should scroll down and there's a lot of empty dead space here. Uh, so you wanna get rid of all this. There's some empty dead text here. There's uh, something going on here. This little button does what? Okay, that goes to music, but that wasn't very clear that that was what that should do. Um, I'm not gonna comment too much on the, the design aesthetics. I'm really just focused on kind of the functionality of what's happening uh, with, with these websites. So kind of just thinking about the function more than anything else. So I might put the different versions of the bio. Some people like to have a Word document. Um, I like to collect everything onto a press page. So let's see what her press page has. So it's got high res photos, it's great. Um, all right, so this is a press page that only has photos. I would definitely uh, try to include everything the press, someone from the press might need. So that includes the bio, that includes a stage plot, that includes uh, bios, I said that already. Um, any other pertinent information, if there's videos, if there's streaming links, all that stuff should be here on the press page so that if somebody from the press is coming, they can find everything that they need and they don't have to dig around your website. I understand we're putting things into silos. So you go to media and here's some music and there's no videos. I would highly recommend getting at least one video here. Um, let's see, schedule. Yep, obviously this is kind of during the COVID thing. So everybody uh, is, having not very many gigs. So that's understandable. Contact. Great, there's a, this is cool. That's fine, it's very clear what to do. Um, but I'm left thinking, Naomi, here on the site that uh, I don't have a good idea of, or good impression of your musical personality or kind of what your music is about. I had to dig around the site to kind of find the things that I was looking for. Uh, I would try to make it more obvious. Try to have something on your homepage that's going to give people direction, number one. Think about bringing people value. So what are they coming to your website for? It's not just a business card. And then think about how you're expressing your brand. It's a little bit all over the place in terms of the photos. Uh, trying to get some photos with a unified look can kind of be good. Uh, some of them are higher quality than others. And... Um, so these aren't things that you're gonna be able to fix in like two seconds, but they're just ideas of things to think as you go forward. One thing I really love about what she has here on this uh, photo page is that she has the photo credit. And I've been hearing more and more from media outlets that they need the photo credit and you need to include it. So don't uh, skimp on the time to include photo credits if you can and if you have it on your website. So if you're on Instagram right now, we're streaming live a screen share of these websites that we're looking at. So uh, head over there if you wanna actually see uh, the, the websites that we're looking at and talking about. So Naomi, thanks you for volunteering your website. Uh, ho hopefully that can help you. And I'm seeing here also at the top, you wanna keep your name and the metadata here at the top. So URL, maybe think about finding another URL. It's gonna be a little easier for people to type in. Uh, you're maybe use your whole name instead. I get there's probably some reason why it's like this. I understand that. So, uh, but maybe think about that. Maybe you don't need .com. There's other endings you can use. Uh, net or there's just, there's a lot now that you can actually use uh, from different countries and different uh, endings. You can even be .jazz if you want. Um, okay, so let's move on to the next second site. So this is Cameron Randall. 
Uh, so as we look at this, you're probably going to be able to guess exactly what I'm going to say. I get to the home page and there's nothing to do. There's nothing to do. I can scroll down a little bit. I think this is also, this could be a Squarespace site, I think. Um, you know, the logo, it brings us back to the home again and just reloads. These icons up here, uh, based on the size, are a little small against this picture. Um, the picture is cool. I think it could use some retouching in terms of the color and the lighting in the photo. So you might think about that. Um, okay, so I see musician, educator, athlete. That's interesting, uh, but I have nothing to do when I get here. Again, so what do you want me to do when I get to your website? And the answer, click on the page that you want is not a good enough answer. I want an action that you can actually take when I'm looking here at the website. Um, let's see, we got a question here. Uh, oh, Jazz Boy, yes, there's a club in Sacramento. I have a friend named Levy who lives in Sacramento, and I'm hoping to come there sometime, and hopefully uh, it'll happen sooner than later, but right now uh, it's pretty hard to travel for everyone, so I'll have to uh, just hold off on that. But hopefully sometime I'll get to come up to Sacramento. Uh, yeah, so if you're on Instagram and uh, you post in questions, I do try to answer the questions as we're streaming here. But uh, back to Cameron. Cameron, also, first of all, thank you for sending me the website so I can look at it. Uh, and everybody could learn. So I love that he's got the photo credits here. Uh, this seems a little redundant, this bottom area. Uh, nothing is happening, there's, not, there's no reason. You could have this scroll down and have other information that people want. Um, could be your schedule, could be a giveaway, could be um, a, some other photos, should, could be a blog post or a series of blog posts, posts. There could be a lot of things there. So think about what you're bringing, what value you're bringing to your visitors once they arrive here at your website. Um, okay, so in expressing your brand, uh, I'm not sure if this photo does or not. I mean, you get to, you can decide that, but I don't think it encompasses musician, educator, and athlete uh, necessarily. And I don't see anything else on the website where it says anything about your athletics. Um, so if that's a big part of your brand, you're definitely going to want to try to incorporate it here uh, somewhere. And I just, I don't see anything about it. So maybe it doesn't make sense to have it there as uh, part of your main thing. And considering this is a music website, after all, maybe you want to segment off your website so that people are uh, checking out the athletic stuff separately. All right, so he's got his bio in one. I usually like to say about, uh, so you can, or learn more or read more. So uh, I'm not a big fan of just the, using just bio. Uh, something you could add here easily is a download of the bio for people, a short version, a long version the full version so you can have it in PDF and Word doc. I'm not, again, I'm only gonna comment on some big picture stuff in terms of uh, the functionality here. Um, we could obviously probably do a whole live stream here about reading through people's um, bios and talking about you know, how to make those a little bit more engaging. But let's see, okay, so Modacity, this is what? Oh yeah, I checked this out before. So this is a practice app that he's running. This is cool. And you know what? That's cool that you're putting this here. Um, I mean, I like, I checked this out. This is pretty cool, actually, a pretty cool app. So I encourage you to check it out. But uh, I think that I would not put it second here. You know, I think I don't, and if even if they did, like, I think I would try to highlight you talking about it or a video of you or something where you can engage with your audience more directly, not necessarily just a lot more text about this app, because who is it for? Why do I care? That's the thing I like to say all the time. Um, my preferred recording mic for the trombone levy is the Coles 4038 and our, our electro... RE20 is the other one. That's the kind of the like step down RE20. And the best one for me is the Coles 4038. Um, so we're talking about uh, Cameron's website here. And so you got a gallery. Again, I like to put all this into like a press page. There's way too many photos here. You want to really kind of highlight what you want someone to use. Um, these are all different, playing different instruments and kind of different looks, which is cool, but um, you know, no one's gonna use these live photos for anything official. So you might keep them on your Facebook or somewhere else or like a live photo gallery somewhere else on your website. I would pick four or five photos that you really wanna highlight for you want people to use. If you put too many, it's like paralysis by analysis kind of, 
not paralysis, but analysis, but having too many choices. Uh, you don't wanna uh, leave people with too many choices. So think about that. Let's see, we've got a blog. Oh, I like this. Oh, this is cool. This should be on the homepage. I don't know why it's not on the homepage. All this stuff should be part of the homepage for sure, because nobody knows why to click on blog. Why are they gonna click on it? They have no idea. But if you put these articles on the homepage, uh, people are gonna be apt to go and check them out. And especially if you have these titles and you have the read more links and all this stuff, this is all cool. Uh, I would definitely recommend doing that. I'm just checking here. Yeah, he's definitely, he's got his uh, name and stuff in the metadata. That's a good thing. Let's keep moving here. Calendar. Obviously, yeah, things are troublesome right now. So two gigs. You know, I like to use bands in town personally um, to link so you can put your bands in town kind of app all over the place. Uh, you can people can subscribe and they get updates and stuff like that. So I like to use the bands in town and that integrates directly with Squarespace, which I see uh, that Cameron is using here to do his website. And let's go to contact. Cool picture. This is taking a while to load for some reason. Maybe he's got white text here. Yeah, you got to change that. You got to make it so we can read it. You've got uh, all white text on here and nobody can send you a message because they can't read it. So always make sure when you're doing websites that you are taking the time to look at them, taking the time to actually make sure that things are looking how you want them to look and all that kind of stuff uh, on multiple browsers because that's one thing that people forget about is uh, Chrome looks one way, um, Safari might look another way, whatever, Firefox, whatever people are using, and then also looking on the mobile. I'm not, even, I'm not looking at either of these sites yet for mobile optimization, so you might think about also looking at your own website for mobile optimization. But uh, thank you to Cameron and thank you to Naomi for volunteering their websites. Hopefully that'll give them a little bit of direction, things they can talk about uh, with their designers or their design team. Um, if you need a website kind of consultation like this, or you want to have our company outside of music work on your website, please get in touch outside music.com is our site info at outside in music is the email address. Uh, so feel free to do that if you want. And again, I'm just going to wrap up today's video by going back to those four items that I think you should consider when you are using when you're working and designing and talking about your website and its functionality. Uh, like we didn't really talk at all about the brand, how it looks and the photos a little bit, but not too much because I mean, it's pretty uh, personal, you know. So, but I just really wanted to focus on the functionality of those websites and how they're set up. So just think about these four things and hopefully this will help you to uh, develop a better strategy for your own website. So one, Drive visitors to take the action that you want them to take when they arrive. What do you want them to do? Just even thinking about that helps you organize it a little bit better. Make sure there's something to do on the homepage that is very clear, whether it's to scroll down, click on something, watch something, listen to something, decide what you want people to do when they get to your site. Two, bring your visitors value, give them a reason to stay in touch with you, whether it's writing like a blog post, whether it's a giveaway, whether it's signing up for a mailing list, any of that stuff, but you wanna bring those visitors value. Uh, three, how are you expressing your brand and is it consistent across the website? Um, it's not that you can't use new and old photos and mix things up, but making sure that everything matches the brand to connect to the audiences that you want to connect with. Um, you have to think about how people are going to perceive the photo, not what you think of the photo. You might think, I like this one and not that one, but how does it translate on the website? Does it work in the design as a fun and does it also function to direct people to where you want to direct them? Like we said, Naomi was looking in one direction and that clearly makes our eyes go in that direction, which can be great if you want somebody to click on a link, like I tried to click on her link. And then lastly, uh, make sure there's the least clicks possible. Try to group things together so that people don't have to click between pages. Everything can be very clear and they can have uh, what they need when they come to your site. So uh, hopefully that's a little brief overview. We will talk about this again. If you want your website included in one of these videos in the future, email me uh, info at outsideinmusic.com and we will get you included. So thanks for being here. Thanks for joining us on this Sunday evening. And uh, Good luck with your, your websites. This is a good time to take, take a minute, make sure it's uh, optimized and looking the way you want for uh, the future when uh, hopefully we all get back to playing some live gigs. So uh, that's it. Thanks for being here and uh, we'll catch you later.